This video of a bike ride in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA shows how to ride safely on a one-lane narrow street. There's Spruce Street. And that's live audio. This is narration. I have two cameras pointing front and rear. Tenth and Spruce. I checked for traffic and merged into line before turning from 10th Street onto Spruce Street. I'm riding in a bike lane here, but I'm carefully checking my mirror before crossing a little street into which drivers could turn right. In November 2017, a right-turning truck killed a bicyclist at this next intersection, Spruce and 11th. The bicyclist was riding in the bike lane as I am. The truck was next to her on the left and turned right. Looking ahead here, you can see a large truck turning right, the same kind of maneuver that killed the bicyclist. There's another small cross street here, but it's one way right to left, and the vehicle that is overtaking did not slow down to turn right. As I approach the intersection, I adjust my speed so I'm between vehicles in view of the driver behind me. One way. Though 12th Street also was one way right to left. I'm skipping forward in this video through times when nothing interesting was happening. 13th Street is one way left to right. Three bicyclists approach the intersection in the bike lane. A man on a motor scooter and I wait in the travel lane behind a stopped car. Hello. We exchanged some pleasantries. Today? Yeah. One bicyclist will turn onto 13th Street. I'm not in the bike lane now for the same reason you're not. <laughs> right turns. Exactly. A bicyclist cuts around a car. You have to be very careful. Well, you have to, you have to plan ahead. The third bicyclist gets squeezed out. Ooh. See what happened to this guy. The motorist ahead never noticed me. What are you doing? And pulls over into the bike lane and stops. The motor scooter rider and I avoid the mess, passing normally on the left. Perfect, except he's now riding in the door zone. Approaching Broad Street, I again check to the rear and then merge out into the travel lane to avoid conflicts with right-turning traffic. The bicyclist who was squeezed out at 13th enters the intersection where he would collide with the vehicle ahead if it turned right. He gets into a tight spot between a police officer and the car ahead. I check to the rear again in case another bicyclist is overtaking and merge into the bike lane to pass a row of stopped vehicles. I'm outside their door zone and no one could turn right or cross from the left here. Motorcyclists have parked in the bike lane. Again, I position myself between vehicles. Two bicyclists return to the bike lane before the intersection. 15th Street is one way right to left, but staying in the travel lane makes me more visible to entering drivers and pedestrians. At 16th Street, a large bus turns right from the middle lane. The driver must do this so that the rear wheels do not go over the curb on the corner. I check to the rear and merge farther to the right than I normally would so you can see what's going on ahead. The rear wheels of a long vehicle off track to the right by several feet. That's why it is so especially dangerous to pass one on the right. Though the vehicle ahead of me is smaller, I'm staying behind it so I can safely pass it on the left when it turns right. Oh, wow. Is that a bike lane? Are you kidding me? Why were there cars parked in the next block, in the extension of the bike lane? Hint, I shot this video on a Sunday morning. The traffic light turns green, traffic starts to move, I check to the rear and merge slightly left to pass the right turning vehicle. The large building on the right is a church, 
and police do not enforce against church parking. Now it's a church. Here the lane is too narrow to share and there's a door zone on both sides, so I ride in the middle. I'm thinking out loud. You can pass. I think the horn was from the second car crossing from the left. But in any case, the light is red, and I've made it very clear by turning my head that I've seen the car behind me. There's another church on the corner, the bike lane is parked full, and I want to let the driver behind me pass, here where there's room. The light changes, but the car does not move. Go ahead. Go! Go, go, go! I'm letting you go! Oh! Oh, thanks! I was left enough to prevent a right hook incident, it would be nice if they used their blinkers. But if I'd known, I'd have been farther left and the car could have simply passed me on the right. The no parking sign and pavement marking show that the right lane is still a bike lane. It is shared with right turning vehicles at the end of the block. Another bicyclist passes me on the right. Suppose that I had decided to turn right as he passed. The rule is first come, first serve, pass on the left when it's safe, and it's nice also to announce your presence with a bell or your voice. He later does look back and warn me of a pothole with a hand gesture. Here I must pass a car that is illegally parked on the right curb. I look back, get the cooperation of a driver behind me with a hand signal you can't see, the driver signals a right turn and we switch lane positions. Well, there was a nice little dance. You can't see this either, but I give drivers who do right a friendly wave. Well done. The light changes and we move out without getting in each other's way. With no bike lane now, shared lane markings tell motorists and bicyclists to share the travel lane head to tail. When two drivers arrive at the same time at a four-way stop, the one on the left is supposed to yield, but this driver is granting me a courtesy. This Toyota's turn signals are peculiarly angled, Thanks. so I can't see the right-hand one. If you look carefully, you can see now that it's blinking. If I could have seen it, I would have waved the driver ahead. Not much time lost on this tiny slow street anyway. In spite of the sign, bicyclists are allowed to ride in Schoolkill River Park. End of video and thanks for watching.